I'm going to give some more practical advice. I get people. So there, there's three ways you can distribute a message. There's audio, there's video, and there's written, right? Audio, vi audio, vi video, and written. Okay. Ideally do all three. Ideally. Um, what I then people is I will ask the question of people like, okay, which of those three do you do the best? Which one is like the most natural that you can just roll out of bed and you can just do it. Okay. For most people it's written for most people it's written. Okay. And then I'll say the other one is which one scares you the most, which one scares the crap out of you. And for most people it's video. And I said, okay, here's what you must do. You must do video first right? Do the difficult, do the challenging thing first, because if it's the one that scares you, it's probably scaring a whole bunch of other people at the same time, you get a little bit of a competitive advantage. So pick two of those three. So do the one you do the best, do the written, and then do the other one of do the one that scares you the most, do the video. And if you have time and capacity, do the audio, do all three if you can. Welcome to the Commonwealth Home Ownership Podcast, the real estate investing podcast for Canadians. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just getting started, you've come to the right place. If you're looking for a way to take control of your life through real estate investing, stay tuned and be sure to join us at cwho.ca, your hub for all things real estate investing in Canada. Let's just get right into it. So, right on. Yeah. So uh, welcome, Russell, to our podcast. Thank you for joining us. Hey, guys. How's it going here today? Look at us. Look at us all, uh, all us uh, Western Canadian rednecks, if you will, trying to do figure out all this fancy uh, high tech stuff. And we all got <laughs> fancy microphones and, and fancy lights in the background, huh? You know, it's like, I thought this, this real estate game was just go out, buy a house, write an offer and be a landlord, huh? Totally. Yeah. Well, we can guarantee you this will be the best sounding and best looking podcast oh, well other <laughs> than the faces the other than the faces right <laughs> i know i've been i'm being outdone i need to get some lights in the back here and make it less uh, office like Sure. Hey guys, before we dive into this, and I know we've got a real fun conversation. We've been, you know, it's funny, we were, we were, we we're having all the bombs that we were dropping before we actually hit the record button. I just wanted to just uh, congratulate you guys. You guys are doing um, a hell of a job, pardon the language, that you guys are doing a wonderful job supporting real estate investors with actionable advice with really good quality people with really good quality guests. And, you know, I'm going to try my best to, to not bring that down, if you will. So, well, but I just want to congratulate you guys for the job you guys are doing. It's making a difference in the community. Thank you, Russell. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us to continue that tradition of high quality guests. Oh, wow. Well, how's that for pandering to the audience? Eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, right on. We we re really really appreciate it. I mean, we are we are working hard to try to bring some uh, valuable content to to investors alike, and uh, you know, hopefully hopefully people are getting something from the conversation. Yeah, honored to serve, honored to serve, and and today's going to be uh, you know the fun conversation we're going to have today. It's going to be very fairly meta, if you will. We're going to be talking about generating leads and online marketing and stuff like that while doing an online you know, piece of content, if you will, right? We're going to be recording a podcast and we might be talking about doing podcasts as a good <laughs> lead source generation for your business. So how, how uh, circular, uh, circular research is that, if you will? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's a, it's a funny world. I mean, it's such, uh, it, it's almost like social media can be cyclical in, in a sense where it, it's so engrossing at the same time we, we wonder if it's the right path to go down, but it's almost like this necessary evil that just continues to grow. And, and it, like, where do we fit in is the, is the big question. As, as real estate investors, you know, sometimes we look at product-based sales where you've got a product and you go to Instagram, you can just sell products through Instagram. Real estate, is it the same? Is it different? Like how do, how do real estate investors position themselves in and with social media like where's the right place to be i mean it's such a big yep. feels like such a big ocean out there and it's yeah well, it's that's scary. a very deep philosophical question we dive in there right off the top so so um 
Interesting to note, uh, I actually had, uh, I had somebody, one of my clients asked me when we were kind of walking through their daily planner, walking through what should they do on a daily basis. And, and we, we really get hone in on what is the best use of your time, right? And uh, for most people, uh, if you're listening to this, or you're going to be watching this on the on the YouTubes and the interwebs, um, if you're not carving out some of your daily schedule for social media, um, you're probably going to start, you know, pardon, I'm trying not to make people fear of missing out, but you're going to start falling behind. If you don't carve out some time for creation of content, for getting onto groups, for supporting, for answering questions, finding out what people's problems are, and just jumping onto Facebook groups and just answering questions, providing value, providing support, providing service, creating a piece of content, writing. If you're not carving out a, a portion of your calendar on a, on a daily basis, um, you will get left behind by somebody who has either a team of people or somebody that is better at it. Right. And that's one of the things is, you know, I, I would consider myself an, an old school real estate investor. I've been doing it tw 20 years. I, I, I joke, I've been doing it since the turn of the century. Right. Uh, yeah. Put the laugh track in there, right yes. there. Right. Yeah. So, but, but, but I'm from the old school where it was like pen and paper and calculator and, and piece of paper, no fancy apps. And there was no internet at that time, bare, or barely internet at the time. There was no online videos. YouTube was barely a thing at the time. Um, and the only way you could really connect and get your message out was go to a networking event, like go to uh, go to a real estate investment network event or something like that. That, and they only met once a month and then in between you're on your own right so so now we have it's 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 never been easier to tap into a worldwide audience of people for having some attention on your business and um i hope we can maybe sh let's let's we can dive into a few uh, insights into that on this conversation if you guys are interested yeah let's do it for, for sure M maybe one question russell so when you talk about the turn of the century I mean, how have you seen things change over that over that time? Because I mean, when I think about 20 years ago, I'm thinking, well, oh my God, you must have be, uh, you know, cold calling, <laughs> cold calling flat out after your networking event and just trying to keep that conversation going. But it's it's different now. Well, you know what? Um, you know, no, no, it's not that far. And when I say turn of the century, I'm talking 2000, right? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tongue in cheek, obviously, like yeah, we're not, yeah. we're not going back to the, 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 the 1900s. Right. <laughs> but, but um, as a matter of fact, um, it was, it was a simple, simpler time at that time. It was more about the relationship. It was more about having one realtor or one or two realtors in there. And you just, you just nurtured that relationship. It's having that mortgage broker that you actually went and saw and you brought them a coffee. It's going into the bank where you talk to the people and you bring them donuts. It was about, it was more about the relationship of, you know, looking the person in the eye, shaking their hand and, and just making the connection as, as a, re a relationship. I, to this day, still have uh, the majority of my real estate relationships. I still have them uh, for people that I transacted my first property with. As a matter of fact, at my wedding, my best man was my realtor. My mortgage broker was there. My tax planner, my accountant was there. And my mentors were there on my wedding and my wedding party, right? So... <laughs> So it's, it's changed a little bit from a standpoint of it's now online, but here's the thing is I think you can still take all those skills that you had about building relationships. It's now a little bit more virtual relationships and, uh, and more at scale as opposed to just maybe a one-on-one, -on -one, if you will. Well, I mean, personally, I don't think the level of trust and the level of relationship bonding that rec that's required in real estate investing, especially with JVs is any different, you know, like the way that you interact might be a little bit different, the way you reach out might be a little bit different. But I think the fundamentals are still the same, because you still need a high level of trust to create a successful JV relationship. 100%. And, and a lot of people just sit there and they go, you know, we're doing this on Zoom right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just say, well, I just I have Zoom in my fingertips. And that's, you know, that's communication. Well, that's, that's, you know, it, it's okay. But it ain't nothing like sitting face to face. I would much rather be in Calgary with you guys, like, and and we just get we get a, a deeper connection and a better conversation than having this over a camera. But we're not we're going to control the uncontrollables and we're going to do what we can do. Okay, but at the same time, um, pivot 
it's also afforded us that there are some huge opportunities that maybe where we just had a Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, maybe even Red Deer, maybe Toronto. If I travel to Toronto, that's my network. I now have an opportunity to get people to across uh, the world. Matter of fact, I was talking to somebody yesterday from North Carolina. And he, he was watching, um, he was out there searching on new construction homes and on, on YouTube and stuff like that. And he came across a video of mine because uh, I like new construction properties. He watched that. He then watched into something. He saw that, I, oh, Jesus, he's got another video. And then another video popped up and then went on Edmonton. And he reached out on the, on the description in the, in the notes. I put on the where, how do you get a hold of me? He reached out to me and wanted to have a conversation about um, real estate investing. And he lives in North Carolina, right? He lives out in the States. I have people all over the world that are potentially reaching out that are doing that nowadays. Now, I don't know if anything will ever come from any of those things, but my database is being built out. Each time a person hits that link, wants to have a conversation, they get put into my CRM database and then follow up with them with email notes. You guys are on my email list. I imagine you probably got an email note today on Wednesday because Wednesday is the day I send an email note out, right? And it's just all about that generation of lead, a, a nurture of a lead, and just building that relationship, even though if we can't be face-to-face -face anymore. Yeah, and I think it's important to realize that over Zoom, it, you're still able to create those connections with people. You're still able to have, a, have an informal meeting and get to know somebody through Zoom. Um, you know, it just may take a little bit longer. It may take an extra couple of meetings or something along those lines to to try and foster that relationship. Whereas, like you said, if you're sitting around a table in person and maybe you're breaking some bread, it might be a little more organic and a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. Yep. I, some of the best business I've ever done has been on a golf course where, or things like that, where you can actually have somebody for four hours at a time and you, you can really deepen the connection. But, you know, at the same time, there's, there's nothing to say that I've had people telling me now that I've replaced golf course with podcast and golf course with YouTube channel. I had somebody the other day that went through and binge listened to all 50 some episodes on my podcast and they know more about me than I know about them. Right. So they just spent 50 plus hours of, 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 or sorry, I've spent 50 plus hours in their ear canal and we've formed a relationship. So um, meaning maybe it's not a, a traditional relationship that I don't know them very well, but they know me very well. They even know my crappy jokes and they even know some of the, the, the ways and some of the, the speaking patterns that I have. And then my sign off at the end of all the things and my, my theme music and stuff like that. So they get, so that's how you can start building relationship is with a lot of these online tools with, you know, a, a website and whether that or a YouTube channel, a podcast, all those kind of tools, you can start building uh, and fostering relationships with people that way as well. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that because we I recently had somebody reach out to say a similar thing. They said, oh, "We just we just listen to all of your your podcasts, and do you have anything else you can send?" <laughs> yeah. I think, I'm I'm sitting there thinking, "Oh my goodness, like there's <laughs> so much work to create all of that uh, content." And yep, don't worry, we'll have some more material for you soon. But it, it is it is a funny thing, isn't it? When when yeah. people know you better than than you know them, just because well, they listen to you. Brad, the, uh, the most awkward one is going to be when they come, uh, you know, I, I take you to bed with me, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> meaning they listen to you in bed, right? Well, think about it. every one of us and everyone listening to this probably has their favorite podcast. I have my favorite podcast. I have some that I just love to listen to. And I listen to them all the time when I'm walking and stuff. And I know them very well. I know those people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I encourage people to, to, you know, just because we live in maybe a little bit more of a virtual world, that shouldn't stop you. Um, it actually, it should be an incredible opportunity that you can potentially have a wider audience, um, but there still are tools and resources and for very little investment, maybe a little bit of time and education and knowledge, you can learn how to put together a podcast or a YouTube channel, or just do a weekly blog post or a weekly LinkedIn post or, or something, things like that. So there's, there's a whole myriad of things that you should do, but, but the first step people have to do is they have to make a commitment to it. They don't have to be interested in it. They have to be committed to it. Okay. Now, um, 
if some people are here listening and they just go social media, I do not have social media. I will not get on social media. I never will. Okay. That's okay. That's fine. But you better have, if you have aspirations of your business to grow your business, you better have somebody in your business that is on social media that can get those eyeballs on your business. It doesn't have to be you as the business owner. As a matter of fact, some of the best real estate investors I know um, don't even know how to turn on a phone in many respects. And for them to jump on something like this would be very, it would be painful for them to try to try to figure it out, but they can buy a million dollar, $2 million, $3 million apartment building and analyze that in their sleep. Right. Um, but that person, if they're that good of a, t- a practitioner of the business of that, they need to have somebody on their team who likes to go out and do TikTok videos and likes to get onto Instagram stories and likes to jump onto podcasts and can be, you know, for lack of a better term, the evangelist or the lead singer of the band, if you will, to get out, to get the word out of the business. Right. So in terms of social media, then how- how frequent would you recommend a person would should go on social media to help to promote their business? Well, that's a, that's a tricky one. It all depends on your business. Um, it depends on a couple things. It depends on um, your aspiration. It depends on what level you're at. It also depends on the amount of time that you have. Like, let's say, for example, someone, let, let's, let's break it into three phases. Mm-hmm. Um, starting, growing, and scaling. Okay, so somebody just getting started, um, they've got there, there, there would be more what I would call a consumer of social media, they're consuming all the Facebook groups, they're looking at all the posts, they're attending the webinars, they're consuming the content, they're going to the wonderful events that you guys host online and the monthly meetups and stuff like that. They're consuming that because they're sponges and they just want to learn. Okay. Um, I think for them, I think they should jump onto social media every once in a while and, and just shoot a quick little video and say, here's what I learned. I was just talking with Brad and Phil at their wonderful event. And they shared this thing on how to qualify, uh, you know, joint venture partners and how to do a checklist on these things. Here's the five things I learned from them. And they talked about what a wonderful place Calgary is. And that's a video that the person is doing. They just, they just took what you guys have told them and they're now sharing it with their audience. Right. So that's somebody who's just getting started. You should probably spend some time on Facebook. You should spend some time on, on Instagram, the simple, simple stuff. Okay. So that's somebody who's maybe starting. If somebody is growing, maybe you've got five properties and now you've tapped out of your own capital. And now you now have to start going out and raising maybe some other people's money. Okay. That's where you need to start investigating into getting um, like a YouTube channel or a LinkedIn profile, or even own your own personal website, okay, your own personal branded website, where you're now starting to become a leader and an influencer and somebody who's taken some action, and you're documenting your journey of your properties you're buying. So your message is transitioned from here's what I've learned, I've talked to Brad and Phil, and here's all the things I've learned, Calgary is wonderful. Now you're going, Holy moly, this is our fifth place. We're just analyzing. We've closed on four. Our team is just crushing it out there with the, with the properties that are coming. Our lawyer is going to be busy because we're submitting another four more offers. If any of you guys are ever interested in finding out some of the properties I'm looking at doing, hit me up, drop me a link, send me a DM, right? You're starting to put some lines in the water to get maybe some fish to come in and some people that might be interested in what you're doing. Okay, so that might be the first one was starting, the second one was growing. So now we're going to talk about somebody who's scaling their portfolio. And this is somebody who's probably in, let's say they're in 15, 20 plus properties or more. Okay, and they're wanting to take it to the next level. Maybe they're even going into larger developments, larger projects, things like that. At that time, you definitely need a website. You definitely need a personal branded website. You definitely need a dedicated YouTube channel. You definitely need your own profile page on Facebook. And you're actually starting to probably investigate doing paid advertising on those platforms as well. You definitely need a really built out uh, LinkedIn profile and you're probably investigating having somebody do your social media for you, right? Maybe you've hired, like in my case, I've hired my 18-year-old daughter who is just a whiz at the computer and she's got all the Adobe suites and she's, a, she's loving all the video work and 
taken the photography. We, we put her into digital media in high school in her grade 12 class. And she, you should see the stuff that she creates. Like, I'm just, I, I'm going, man, she could probably put hair on my head if she wanted to with, with, with the programs <laughs> that she's doing. And that would be a tall tale to do that kind of stuff, right? So, so you maybe start hiring people to do that for you. And then you start going on and you start actually having a calendar of events, meaning calendar uh, on a weekly basis. I know on my on Tuesdays is the day I release a podcast. On Wednesday is the day I release an email. On Thursday is YouTube video release day. And then on Friday, every second Friday, I release a second podcast of the week. Okay. And then in between that, it's all about, and then on, uh, I do creation typically on Mondays is when I create, and then I do distribution after that. And I spend a good pff, a couple hours a day just distributing a message. Um, sometimes to the point that, you know, my wife comes sometimes questions and goes, goes, uh, is this all, is this, is this all about real estate that you're doing all this stuff? And, and it is, it, it is because you do need um, that attention and the eyeballs on your business, because as you know, I think Gary V probably put it is attention is a new currency. And the more attention you have, um, the more currency and more capital that can come to your business, right? Because if you get really good at this stuff on social media and building out your brand and learning how uh, leads come into a funnel and then putting them into CRM and nurturing all those, those leads, let's say you build up a database of 10, 20, 30,000 people. Um, you don't think that people are going to come to you that maybe have developments or other projects that maybe don't have a good marketing arm. And they'll say, would you like to partner together? And we'll give you a piece of this development if you help us promote this and you promote it to your list of people. And you know, you want to make sure it's a good project and it checks all the boxes. Maybe you'll even invest your own money into the, to the, to it as well. And if you truly do this right, um, getting good at social media and getting good at the marketing side could be a business within the business. And I don't think a lot of real estate investors are doing a good job of it at the moment. And there's a huge opportunity. There's a, there's a new frontier, if you will, that you can lean into that and become really good at the social media game and the whole online marketing side. So mm. I know I said an awful lot there. So sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's good. No, I I think it's I think it's interesting because sometimes there there does feel like a bit of a disconnect between the time that you're allocating to social media, the work that it takes, and the actual real estate. <laughs> sometimes it can feel like you're going in this social media uh, uh, washing machine round in circles, and the real estate is almost separate, if you will. Um, yeah. And it, it, it I, I I don't know if it's a common uh, feeling for people out there that are doing social media uh, week after week and month after month and not generating leads from it and thinking, what, why am I even doing this? You know, because the real estate side of things hasn't changed. I'm not, I haven't got people throwing money at me. Like how long should it take? Or, or do you think people should stick at it to, to yeah. build that funnel or well, contact? the, the, I have two answers. I have kind of the, uh, you know, the tongue in cheek answer. And then I have maybe a longer detailed one. The tongue in the cheek answer is how long does it take as long as it takes, yeah. right? It all depends on how, on how committed you are to the process. Like anything in life, if you just go to the gym or, or you go and you go to read one book on real estate or you analyze five properties and then you stop there, you're not going to accomplish your goals, right? So it takes time. It really takes time. And it's, it's a commitment. Like, you know, I'll give two examples. Um, example number one is with my podcast, the best advice I had, I hired a podcast consultant to help me launch it. And the first piece of advice he said is if you aren't committed to do this for three years, don't start. I said, what are you talking about? And he, he goes, he goes, this is a long term gain because you won't see any traction on the first episodes that you put out. And there's only seven people that do and it was probably your mom twice that that downloaded it <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, it's painful because there's a lot of time and you have to sit there and you put together this and then you send it off in editors and you get your EQ curves and you're and you're talking limiters and compressions and all this kind of you just learn a whole new thing and learning how to do use Adobe addition and all this kind of stuff. It's a long it's it's a lot of work. Okay. But then once you start, you know, 
I think you guys would understand the term on the prairies. Uh, if you're a prairie person is if once you've primed the pump, right, you know, the old pump, pump jack on the well, and mm -hmm. you know, even, even an oil pump, right. You're going to be pumping and pumping to get water to come out. Right. And then there's nothing for, and you're feeling tired just when your arms are just about to fall off, all of a sudden the water starts flowing out of the, out of the water pump. And then it's after that, you just keep pumping and it gets a lot easier because the water just continues to flow. Okay. Um, here, here's a, a, an example. Um, some of my best most performing YouTube videos at the moment. And there is, don't get me wrong, my, my YouTube channel is still small compared to, you know, if you find people out there that have millions and millions of subscribers, I still have a very small YouTube channel, but mine's very, very niched on what I do. Very niched and it's very service driven. Um, my, my best performing YouTube video was one that was shot, it's coming on a year now, and it's now almost 3000 views on it. And, but that was shot over a year ago and nothing came out of the, the gate when it first came out. And now all of a sudden people are starting to search on it. And if, and if you actually go onto YouTube and if you search Edmonton real estate investing or Edmonton real estate investments in YouTube, I have three of probably the top 10 videos on YouTube on that search term. And that's just started to happen within probably the last, um, last couple months that that's happening. And, and now what's happening is people are now starting to come to that. And then once they watch one, I'm going to shoot another one. My business partner, I'm going to shoot a monthly update every month because it's gaining some traction and people are finding it. We're getting known as Edmonton real estate investors as the place to go to get some Edmonton properties and Edmonton investment opportunities. So I'm just going to start doubling down on that search term. And I'm just going to really just hone in on that as well. At the same time, that's no different than the podcast. That's no different than if you put out a LinkedIn article, if you do any of that kind of stuff is just niche down. Uh, here's one of my coaches on the YouTube side has a saying and she, she says, uh, it's niche down to blow up that if you really know who your audience is and who you're serving and your target and your target search terms, really just hone down onto it, be the best at serving that audience. And then you have a deep connection with that people. And most of those people will come back and want to do business with you at the same time. Right. There's uh, merit in the longevity. So you know, Phil, something that you and I talk to, to people about when they're just starting out is, is if, if we could tell you today that if you worked really hard at this for three years and got absolutely no joint venture partners, but after three years, you got 10 joint venture partners, would you stick at it? And everybody's answer is, of course I would. You know, that's phenomenal. <laughs> it's yeah. like, all right, well, your time <laughs> starts now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it takes, takes time to build those relationships, right? And they don't want yeah. to sell to a, a random person out the gate. That doesn't usually go anywhere. Well, that's the problem with a lot of people nowadays is everybody has an instant gratification with a lot of these things. And everybody thinks that, oh, geez, I, I, I put out a video. Why isn't it, why isn't it raining? With, with the money coming in or, or I put out a podcast. Why isn't, where is everybody? Like, come on. Like, why isn't my phone ringing off the hook? It's just that, you know, the art of aggressive patience is, is, is lost. Aggressive patience is a term that I heard probably on a podcast I was listening to. It's meaning aggressive on your actions, like daily actions, like get after it, but be patient with the result. Right. And I think that would really resonate with me when I heard that was, um, I think it was a, a, either an Andy Frisella or an Ed Milet one. And they talked about is if somebody handed you a recipe for the greatest chocolate cake in the world, and it talked about the proper ingredients and the proper uh, uh, sequence and the proper way of whisking it and fold it, you know, pardon, uh, fold the cheese, fold the cheese. Sorry. That's a, a Shit's <laughs> Creek analogy, but, but anyways, and, and, and the recipe called for, uh, 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Okay. If you cranked your oven up to 700 degrees, that cake ain't going to be put and baked in 15 minutes. As a matter of fact, you're going to ruin it. Sometimes it takes the time it takes, even though you may have all the ingredients, sometimes you just have to put the time in to really do it. And, um, 
interesting. Uh, I, I share a story here, you know, sometimes in some of these podcasts, and I, this was a, a recent one I did when somebody asked me the question, so what is your superpower? And I go, well, I go, the superpower I'm going to tell you is probably the most super, or the most boring superhero you could ever imagine. I'm Mr. Show Up Man. Dun, ta, da, dum. <laughs> I'm Mr. Show Up Man. I just keep showing up, right? As, but it, it comes on multiple things is if you just keep showing up, is number one, but how you show up is more important than just if you show up. Now, I know you guys and your audience loves really tactical, tangible things to sink your teeth into. Everyone who's probably gonna be listening to this podcast or watching this probably has attended a virtual event, a summit, a meetup, something where you probably have attended it. If you're registered to it and you're gonna take the time to go to it, you're gonna take the time to show up, show up powerfully. What do I mean by show up powerfully? Come with a good camera, come with a microphone, come with a list of questions, come with some energy, come with some, you know, that you wanna learn. When people are doing uh, presentations and they have the chat box open, go in there, wow, that's amazing. And you just show up and you have energy and you contribute and you keep doing this. And then when they have time of some networking or they, anyone have a question? Yeah, I got my question. Can I turn my camera on? I got my microphone, I'm ready to, I'm ready to share this. And then I look the presenter in the eye and then I'll ask this incredible question, right? And then now you get on the camera, you get on the live broadcast, you get on the recording, you're known as somebody, holy moly, who was that person that asked that question? What a great question that was. What was their name again? Oh, yeah, that was that was Phil. Phil, man, he's kicking some butt. Yeah, we got to remember that guy. He knows about Calgary. Next time we're doing a research report in Calgary, I'm gonna go talk to Phil, right? So it's just if you're going to show up, show up, right? Don't just sit there and and you have, you know, sorry, I just have a little bit of a thing about cheesy but green screen backgrounds and, and you're sitting there and your, your head's bobbing around and the green screen's not working. And, and it's, that's just my, my own personal prefer. I, I, I choose not to do that. If you well, know. I mean, that's still better than the person who just shows up, no camera, no microphone. All True. you see is like, you know, maybe a yeah. name on a blank screen, right? Yeah. But, but let, let's do another, I'm going to give you another example. Um, this is a, you know, sometimes I, I don't, I don't like talking about my own stories too much, but I'm going to share a story with uh, a client of my coaching client that I was working with. And uh, he was sharing with me, I, I always get to know them a little bit better. I get a little bit of their backstory, find out what they're all about and all that kind of stuff. And he's just this incredible story. Um, very inspiring. And uh, I said, you need to get onto podcasts and you need to share this story about what you're doing. And I'm not going to get into that because uh, I, I would probably recommend you guys talk to this young fellow as well. It's just this an inspiring story. But I said, okay, you're going to get onto podcasts. So here's your first exercise is you're going to go tell me all the realist Canadian real estate investing podcasts. And he goes, well, I know them all. I listen to them all. Okay, great. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to pick your telephone up and you're going to shoot a personalized video to the host of every one of those podcasts. You know, he would sit there and he goes, and, and what you're going to do is you're going to tell a heartfelt story of what they've done, how they've helped you, what you've learned. And then you're going to share is that I would love to share my story. I think it could be very helpful for beginning people that have overcome some tremendous obstacles to be able to have. And here's a very short summary of my obstacles I've had overcome. i have now on my third property. And I think a lot of your audience would really benefit hearing from somebody just starting, not some of those people that have got hundreds and hundreds of plays they can't relate to. And he shot a video and he shot 20 of those. Okay. And he's on one, two, he's, he's doing his fourth podcast now and take a guess, which is the fifth one he's going to be doing. He's going to be on mine. And he shot me a video on that, right? So that's just how, how, how different is that than somebody who has those generic emails that people put out and say, you know, this person's wrote a book and you should have them on your podcast and stuff. I want somebody who's taken the time to shoot me a video who has an inspiring story, who's actually given some thought on how they can serve the audience on sharing of, you know, going as where I'm just getting started. And I think your audience would really resonate with somebody who's just getting started. And here's a little bit of my backstory. And I think this could be very helpful, right? I have all day, all day long to put that person on my podcast, right? Now, 
I hate to say this, guys, you might be getting some videos sent to your DMs of, of people <laughs> wanting to be on your podcast upcoming, but, but wouldn't that have somebody stand out a little bit more than the generic emails that you get? Absolutely. Yeah. We're, right? It's funny you mentioned those emails because, yeah. We... I just, honestly, I, I look at them quickly and I kind of, eh, sorry, that's a technical term for delete. <laughs> <laughs> most of them, sorry, right? Most of them, that's where they go, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you can typically tell when there's not really much sincerity in in the email at all right like it's uh, we we completely understand what you're saying i think it's a great differentiator um i it just reminded me i just made a note here but it reminded me of a book i read quite some time ago which is a sm small short read but it's called convince them in 90 seconds or less and it talks you know systematically about some of these specific items when you show up how do you show up Yep. what how, how do you present yourself like do you, and and this is a funny thing because I, I have some clients that i've been coaching for quite some time now and something that they have implemented based on some of the discussions we've had is the way that they show up and we when we talk about the way that they dress and present themselves there's nothing wrong with the way that they dress however when they go to a real estate investing uh uh meeting or, or a meetup or whatever it is, they dress differently because yep. what we've established is they're not dressing for themselves. They're dressing for everybody else because you literally have seconds to make a good impression and like it or not, people will make their own mind up about the impression you give them simply just because of the way that you look. Yep. So it just really resonated with me, Russell, about reading that book. It really really hit home when it came yep. to there were specifics in there about make sure that certain if you wear any colors that they match you're coordinated because all of that stuff resonates and so even on a zoom call you can see somebody's posture you can see the way if they're slouching back in their chair at an event you can see whether they're engaged or not yep now interesting to note um the uh, i'm going to give you another book referral it's it's actually research is now showing it's four seconds or less and there's a great book called hook point um first name that's why i was i look at over my shoulder at my bookcase over here last name is kane k k a n e and i think it's either derek or oh, just i can't find it quickly but he actually wrote um a book called 1 million followers on how he generated an audience of 1 million people in 30 days the whole step-by-step -step process. And then the other book is called Hook Point and where you truly have four seconds to make, you know, there's research shows that humans have less attention span than goldfish nowadays. And it actually changed. And that was my YouTube consultant when I was doing too, is she, she changed a way that we're looking at doing the YouTube, my YouTube videos where we're going to take um, for example, a lot of people put their graphics and their logo and a little bit of theme music at the beginning of their YouTube videos. And you're sitting there, if you're watching it, people are just going, ah, I'm gone. Right. And so she's uh, the research she did when she came back and she said, you need to give the best 15 seconds of there where you teach the best, you know, mic drop moment on your video. That needs to be the first 15 seconds of the video. And you just have a mic drop moment. And then you can get into a little, maybe a little stinger transition, which then gets into, hi, I'm Russell Westcott. I help real estate investors start growing scale, the real estate investing portfolio of my dreams. Here's what we're going to talk about in this video. But you drop a bomb in the first 15 seconds of a mic drop moment. Now you have a greater chance of somebody to engage and watch your whole video. So I've actually changed my entire video, uh, YouTube videos that are coming out to get more engagement because the more people engage with it. The longer they watch it, the more they binge watch, the more the YouTube algorithm will keep pushing out more of your videos to them and also people like them, right? Let YouTube do the work for you, right? You don't have to do that. You publish one video, you do a really good job and you're potentially one video away from uh, hundreds of thousands of eyeballs on you. And you just never know which one it is, but you have to keep showing up. You keep publishing, you keep hitting record, you keep uh, doing the edits, you keep having your team do it and you keep publishing on a regular basis. Right. So, so I would encourage people to really just focus on that, um, 
on that first impression. And it's, it's, it's a lot shorter than people think now, especially in a virtual world, especially in what I call a, a thumb scrolling world. You got, you got four seconds to get somebody to stop, stop the scroll hole. Right. And, uh, and the people that do that the best are the ones that are going to get the most attention, which have people then will go into their, you know, their lead generation, which then go into their, their funnels, which then lead into their, their nurturing campaigns, which then you have them on your database and you can keep following up with them with emails. And then you, lo and behold, after a couple of years, you can maybe, you have a, an investment opportunity that works for them. You just never know. Right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Phil. No, no, go ahead. No, I'll let yeah, you finish your thought. I, uh, yeah, I made a note here and you kind of started down that track, but good versus bad content, you know, and I think you, there's a really good nugget there about where to put the content. It's not to say the rest of the content's bad, but you're putting you're putting the, the best nugget right at the start to then capture that engagement. But I mean, in terms of good versus bad content, is there something that people can do that is, you know, maybe not detrimental to their channel or to their presence. Yeah, here's here's the thing. Um, it it's one of those things that there's a little bit of um testing. Or sorry, I shouldn't say a little. It's it's all testing in many respects. A lot of people would sit there and go, I don't know if this is good content or bad content. My my attitude with most people is just shoot the puck. Sorry for the over the <laughs> over the shoulder saying here, right beside my baby Yoda. I keep that there to remind myself to shoot the puck right? Because uh, the more pucks you shoot, the more opportunities you have to keep pushing forward. And here's the beautiful thing is the more pucks you shoot on net, the more you learn. Now, there was a famous um, study, and I'm going to might get the, the book was, oh, James Clear Atomic Habits. I don't know if you guys have read that book. Um, in there, list, it yeah. showed a it showed a study in there about there was a, a, a school school project they had to do one and it was a photography class. The school, the, the children were divided into two teams. One team was being judged on taking one photo, the best photo they possibly could get. And they're going to be graded on the one photo. OK, the other group was being judged on the quantity of photos they took. So the more pictures they took, the more snaps they took, the more images they captured, the more they would do. They got graded on the quantity of stuff that they did. And then the teacher at the end said when they actually evaluated the photos, the, the team that took the most amount of photos actually had the best photos at the same time. So keep shooting the puck, keep taking those pictures, keep, keep, you know, get out there and just, you know, take a hack at it and just, you never know. Right. And, and, and then what you do is you open to feedback, you learn, maybe you get some coaching and maybe you start studying that you watch people, what they do. You watch somebody, maybe you're watching this YouTube video or listening to this and you're going, yeah, the way Russell's talking, the, maybe the way he lowers his voice, the way he talked about, you know, Mr. Show up man, the way he has his inflection, the way he's making the eye contact. You look at what I'm saying, you also look at how I'm saying it. And then you look at it, what can you implement for your business? Or maybe you go to, to I'll give you another example. Um, you guys have a fantastic website, by the way, just as an FYI. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm not to pandering and I'm not trying to <laughs> blow sunshine. I, you guys have a fantastic website. Um, if you actually, if any of your listeners have not been onto your guys's website yet, you should go check it out and see how they've done it. The images, the colors, the, 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 in, the it's, it's, it's aligned with the, the branding, uh, the graphics, you guys have done an amazing job with it. Um, now don't just go to their website to just go, oh, well, what's going on? Go there to learn, right? Analyze it. Why did they put that there? Why did they choose those colors? Well, oh, geez, they have an opt-in box. Where does the opt-in box go? What happens when I put in my email address? Do I get an email? Do I get in a sequence of seven emails that go from there? What, what happens? Like be a student of this, like be a practitioner of the marketing game, be a practitioner of the attention game, be a practitioner of social media. Don't consume it, create it. Okay. And that is one of the best things I can share with you guys is how to put social media in its proper place is when you jump onto social media, you are creating, you're not consuming. Okay. Once you find yourself start consuming and the scroll holes and the thumbs and flicks and flaps and whatever you're, whatever it is you're doing, stop social media. Cause if you ain't creating, get out. 
Okay. Always get on the create, create, solve problems, help people provide value, answer questions, or post something of some value to help other people. If, if, if you get that straight, if that's the only thing you remember what we're talking about, if you create and not consume social media and this marketing game will be actually very beneficial for you. That's really good advice, uh, Russell. And even, and just more on shoot the puck, you know, the whole concept of just doing more. I mean, really it's a whole iter iterative process, right? The more you do it, the better you get. And even when it comes down to our website, that was, it took several revisions oh, to, absolutely. Get, to get it to that point where it looks good. I mean, it took you know, over, over a course of a couple of years. It wasn't just something on, you know, it wasn't the first thing, first they didn't look like that uh, out of no, the gate. I, I would hope not, or else, or else you're in the wrong business. If that was your first cut, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> and same goes for podcasts. You know, the first podcasts are almost a little bit painful to listen to. <laughs> well, audio, with this one, it's an exception, of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> audio <laughs> quality is terrible. You know, we lots of ums and ahs while we're talking. So and it takes time, just like you said. But yeah. in terms of a couple of questions here, first of all, in terms of content that you create like videos, when it comes to your attention span, you're saying that how everyone has a very short attention span. Is there an optimum video length that you recommend? It, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm testing that out right now. Um, and, and, and here's, here's what I, here's what I've landed on. And I, I usually use myself as the guinea pig, if you will. Um, I will sit there and I go, okay, when I jump onto YouTube, when I go into YouTube, I'm searching for an answer to a problem. And YouTube is a search engine. Don't get me wrong. It, that's what it, it's main, one of its main function. It's turning a little bit more towards entertainment, a little bit, but it's still not there. But at the, the end of the day, it's a, it's a search engine. And people go there to find answers. Now, two things. If you were going there and you were typing uh, Edmonton Real Estate Investing, Okay. And you saw a bunch of videos. You're probably going to look at the, the first few, right? And okay. First few, I uh, got it. But you're probably going to find, and you'll probably will pick the one that's a little shorter in length, mm -hmm. right? Most people will want the answer quicker. Okay. Um, and then, so what you do is maybe you go, and then you'll go there and you'll look and you go, okay, but there's this one person shows up like three times. Oh, maybe they have something to say. I might dive into the long one, but most people will want the answer sooner rather than later when they go into it. And then what they do is they'll then, after they've done the first one, they'll then go and they'll watch another one and then they'll watch another one. And then eventually they'll go, Oh, I want more. I want more. I want more. And then that's what my podcast does. The podcast is the long form hour, hour and a half, two hour conversation where we unpack things and we go, we go really deep with the guests or the lessons or the learning and stuff like that. My YouTube channel is specific answers to specific questions that are search engine friendly. Now here's, so hope that that helped answer that, but I'm going to take it one step further. I'm actually trying to be smarter in my old age that I'm now starting to record my podcasts, um, long form podcasts on video format in sizable bite sized chunks that I can cut, cut, cut. And I have at the end of that podcast episode, I have one long form podcast that people can binge listen and listen over long term when they're working out and they're on their long drives. And I have five YouTube videos that are in, say, 10 to 15 minute length at the same time. That can easily be a start, a finish, a story, start, a finish, a story, start, a finish, a story that teaches a specific topic in there as well, right? So for example, um, last one, my, my business partner and I did. Uh, our podcast was, we took three topics, an Edmonton update, how to find a good real estate investment agent. Like how do you interview and how do you find a good real estate investment agent? And what would you do if you were starting in 2021? Like, what would you do? And, and where I got those topics from, I got those topics from popular search terms in YouTube. Like people are searching those terms, right? And it goes back to my niche. So Jason and I sat down and we did a one long form recording. There was a, a beginning, an introduction, a story. We told it at the end. Then, then we did a quick transition. And then we did that. So we had at the end of it, we had one podcast and four YouTube videos that came out of that. And then now I have content for, for five weeks, right? So I try to be a little bit smarter in the creation of, of these kind of things. And, and, and you know where I learned most of this from? 
is by just being a student of this. And, and actually I learned a lot of this was from Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's podcasts are, you know, three, you have to, you have to set aside an, a week to get through one Joe Rogan podcast. Um, and he was asked that question. He goes, he goes, he goes, honestly, I really don't care. I just want to have that conversation. And it's, I put it out on that medium on podcasts. If somebody wants to take four listens or five listens, or they want to do it in one, that's, I don't, it doesn't really matter. So he puts out a long form podcast episode entertainment, but he actually gets more YouTube videos from his chopped up YouTube, uh, Joe Rogan clips. Uh, videos where he just actually just where he's has a guest and they talk about uh, you know let's say he has you know there's a hot button Jordan Peterson on and he's talking with Jordan Peterson about something and they talk about a, a protest and something like that and they'll just clip that out and then there's a standalone YouTube video and the, the standalone YouTube video get like millions of views where the long form podcast on YouTube will only get like 400,000 but he'll get half a million listens on on the podcast right? So it's just a matter of just being very strategic on how you repurpose your content. And that was one of the things I biggest things I had to get over was, you know, in, in our heads, we think that you're, everybody's listening to the, our stuff, right? Everybody's listening to this. Why would I want to put it on multiple different channels? I'm going to probably, you know, upset somebody who's already seen it. Um, you know, get over yourself. Very few people actually will listen and watch and all these kind of things, all of them, right? And you just never know. And there's an old, you just keep putting out the message and maybe you put the mess, same message out again, a little bit differently. But here's the thing. And there's an old stoic philosophy that says a person never stands in the same river twice. Meaning if somebody heard that message six months ago, uh, when they stand in that river again, the water that's rushing through, they're a different person. So maybe the message you share six months later, the person is completely different and they hear it differently and maybe they do something with it, right? So, so don't be afraid to hit the record button. Don't be afraid to chop, slice, dice, and puree. And don't be afraid to put it out to multiple different channels with the same thing, right? Really good advice too. I think after this podcast, I think we're going to approach our podcast a little bit differently too. <laughs> well, it's it's... It's just, you know, here's the thing is we're, we're, you guys have invested a lot of time and energy and, you know, emails and us connecting and having this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, to take that one podcast and put it out one time and maybe one email or something or whatever, whatever your process is. Um, I, I, I think you guys are, are, are wasting an opportunity to really deepen the message and think about it from the standpoint of this. Don't think about it of the business you'll get from it or how many listeners or subscribers think about the impact you'll have on your audience. And maybe somebody won't listen to an hour podcast, but they'll maybe listen to a 97 second clip where we did a drop, a mic drop moment. And then that person will go, that was really good. I feel much better for the day. Now, you know what? I'm going to go check those guys out and I'm going to maybe watch another one. I watched a video. Then there's a seven minute video. Okay. These guys know what they're talking about. Yeah. I'm going to go check out their website. Holy moly. They got an event up coming in Calgary talking about uh, how to structure your business and how to get your books in order and how to become sophisticated, savvy businessmen and real estate investor. Hmm, I'm going to go check these guys out. Matter of fact, I saw that video. I'm going to watch, watch an hour video of them now, right? And it all started with maybe them a 97 second clip that they first saw, right? Yeah, I think it's amazing that there's like, it is such a continual process of learning as, as you go. I mean, you're, I mean, you're a perfect example, Russell, who you're talking about having, having a YouTube coach, having a podcast coach. I mean, you wouldn't do those things if you're not continually trying to evolve. Well, and, and then here lies a little bit of the conundrum I have is I'm a real estate investor. Guys, that's, that's what I do. I, I love putting deals together. I'm actually very shy and introverted. This is actually, I don't, I enjoy it because I, because it's part of, you know, if I know thyself, it's the yin to my yang. Like if you, if you really think about it, I, if, when you're painfully shy and introverted, you need to have something extreme on the other side in order for you to become like a whole person, like the whole yin and yang uh, method. So I have to get onto a stage 
on to deliver a podcast or get onto uh, webinars. And I have to present in order to just make myself feel whole because I'm very, very introverted naturally. And it is actually very, takes a lot of energy to be able to do this. It's not natural. It's something that uh, takes some work and time and effort and a lot of training. And I've done as much training on uh, marketing, um, social media, um, presentations, delivering messages, podcasts. I've done as much training on that as I have on, on, on real estate. So what, what I have to do at the same time is I have to backfill parts of my business with property management, with accountants, with a good realtor, with all these people as part of my real estate business. I have to backfill my business in order to give me the time to go learn how to do all this stuff and to, to, to take this effort. So if, if I was sitting here with the portfolio that I have, and if I was self-managing and I was doing my own books and I was handling all the phone calls and handling all the appointments and handling all these kind of stuff, I would not have time to help and coach people. I would not have time to shoot a video. I'd not have time to have this wonderful conversation with two amazing real estate investors. So you have to structure your business to support what you want to do right? And I'm looking to take the next step within my business with my business partner, who is a fantastic business operator. Um, He takes care of a lot of the day to day, He takes care of a lot of the systems, and it frees me up to go do what I like to do. And that's, you know, what we're doing right now. And this is having this conversation, right? And, um, and, you know, the next thing I'm going to do is the next learning I'm doing, I've actually signed up for a course next week, where for for I think it's for 30 days, we have to go do a Facebook live every day for 30 days. That's part of the exercise. And that's part of the challenge is I want to master and learn the live broadcast thing is next. How do you go live on your phone? How do you go live on a computer? How do you start having a little bit of a, a more of a production of what you're doing? And then you get into some groups and you practice with other people that are doing this. And it's, it's no different than learning how to analyze a property or writing offers. They're all trainable skills. I I can I can sympathize or empathize with you, Russell, because I personally am pretty introverted for the most part. Like I would rather, much rather, just be sitting at home playing video games and without having to you know, socialize with people, connect with people I don't know, and have these potentially what I feel like somewhat uncomfortable conversations sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's something that you have to do, though. But right? it is. You're right, and this, yeah, it's something I have to do to promote my business, right? To get the to get the properties to build the portfolio, but how, I mean, to me, I felt like I had some training in schooling where I did some Toastmasters in the past where, you know, I would have, where you had to force yourself to talk, which kind of got, you got, got me on um, my comfort zone. That's kind of where I started with was Toastmasters. But what did you do? What was your process to kind of get you out of your shell? Just curious. Well, it, it was one of those ones where it came back to a couple things. Um, it actually was very early on in my real estate investing when I went to conferences and I went there and I had aspirations that I wanted to be, I'm I'm competitive. You know, at the end of the day, we're all competitive in in many respects. Okay. Um, Some of us are just different levels of um, overtly competitiveness, if you will. Like there's some people I call them, I call them, they're, they're, they're sharks. They swim underneath the surface and you never, ever hear from them. And then, but, but they're just, there's a competitive nature underneath that surface that you just never know. And you just, all of a sudden you go, where did that, where did that just come from? Right? So here, here's the succinct question was, uh, I went to these events and I wanted to meet the people that were what I called the best, the players. Okay. And so I went to these events and being shy and introverted are one of our superpowers as introverts is the power of observation. We can sit back and we can assess a room. We can sense what's going on. We can see things that other people can't see. Okay. So I went there and I saw, and I saw, I saw these pods form of people. And, you know, the groups of eight, 10, 12, 15 people during breaks. And then almost with every pod I saw, there was somebody standing in the middle of a surrounded by a group of people. Okay. And lo and behold, when I started asking the question, who are the players in this room? Go figure. It was the people standing in the middle of the group of people, right? They were giving little mini presentations. They were talking, they were sharing, they were, they were out of their shell. They were, you know, 
you know, sharing an inspiring message with others. And each one of them were delivering a mini presentation. Okay. And then at that time I decided, and then I also was very moved and touched by some of the presenters on stage and their stories. And I said, you know what? I want to learn how to tell a good story to move people, to transform people, to help people bust through some obstacles, to help create, um, you know, people to, to have a feeling, if you will, because I felt something when that person did that presentation. So at that time, I made a decision that I was in order, if I wanted to get successful in this business, I wanted to learn how to master that one skill. And then which led me down a path to hire a coach, to watch way I watch um, comedies, way I watch a stand up comedian work a room, the way I listen to in my bookshelf over here, I have an entire shelf of how to deliver a presentation, how to tell a story, how to, you know, use your body and physicality and your presentation style. And I figured the more I learned that and the better I got that was the better my business would grow. And to, to succinctly answer the question is, I chose to do the opposite of what was holding of, of what was holding me back. Meaning, if I was shy and introverted, I was going to go over the top, the opposite direction. I call it the uh, Costanza principle, right? The George Costanza, where you do the opposite <laughs> of what you normally would do. <laughs> so, uh, you, Russell, you kind of lead me into a question that I, I, I wrote down earlier, but. In this day and age, using social media, Zoom, technology, uh, like you talk about presentations. I mean, if you're not able to sit in a room with everybody and present an opportunity, what, what in your mind is the best way for people to, to work a Zoom room to do that? Yeah. Like, how do you, how, well, what's the best way? Great, great, great segue. So I'll give you an example. I was at an event. Um, my ideal a target for people to invest with me or to maybe buy up into a project that I'm working on is people in Ontario or British Columbia that are frustrated that just cannot find cash flowing properties that their properties they're paying $800,000 for a bungalow and then they have to throw another $150,000 into it and their their multiple offers they have no time for conditions they have to feel rushed and they feel like they're they're making bad decisions right so did you hear how clear I was on my ideal customer or my ideal partner, people that want to work with me? So what I will do is I will find those Zoom rooms and I'll give you an example. So a couple months ago, I was in a Zoom room of a group in Ontario and it was on the break. Okay. And, you know, during the break, they were playing some music and on the break, everyone's just kind of just eating things and nobody's talking. It's just kind of boring and stuff like that. And I flicked my camera on, I cranked up the nice looking microphone. I said, Hey guys, what's going on? Tell me what you guys are doing. What are you guys buying? What's, what's hot in the marketplace? So I just engaged them in a conversation. Right. And then in that lo and behold, out of that conversation, I already knew frustration was going to come out in it. Right. I knew because I know the market because I pay attention. I knew that people were going to just say the prices are crazy, man. There's so many multiple offers we have to put in all this kind of, you know, we can't even make a decision. I don't even know which way to turn. And I said, wow, that's crazy. Let me tell you a story about a client I was working with. Um, they were out in BC and they were buying in Edmonton. Um, one of the homework assignments I gave them was to go find seven investment opportunities and then present it to me the week after on our next coaching call. They found all of them in the MLS, all seven of them cash flowed. Um, we, he wrote an offer on one of them, okay? He had conditions. He was able to negotiate. He was able to actually extend conditions. He had cash flow, which I mentioned before, and he didn't have to pay land transfer tax. There's no rent controls. There's no things, right? So how does that compare to what you guys are feeling right now? And they're going, wow, yeah, where is that place? I said, it's in Edmonton, Alberta. And they go, oh, so people in Toronto go, oh, Edmonton. And I said, well, time out. Why, oh, Edmonton. And then they told me why they bad in Edmonton. And I got a chance to then present why Edmonton, why now? Right? And I just did that on a break. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so I'm not here to get you guys to, to, if you are listening to this, to go spam this. I came out of 100% from a standpoint of providing value and service and coaching and helping people bust through an obstacle. And I just told them a story of one of my clients who is not having that, those obstacles. And lo and behold, there's been some business that has come from that, right? So that's, I think that's a brilliant way of, of people to do that. And, and you know what? 
I'm not just a coach and I'm not just somebody who's on social media. I'm actually a practitioner. I practice what I teach. I purchase properties. I buy real estate. Like I told you at the beginning is at the core, I'm a real estate investor. And that's what I want to do. This other stuff is just a means to an ends to buy more properties to, to create our financial futures. Right. And well, a lot of people don't realize just how important, I mean, just like any other business marketing is almost number one. If people don't know you exist, then yeah, yeah they can't, they can't engage with you. Okay, well, so. nobody, nobody can read. Nobody can, if as, lo as loud as you think it, like some of you might be sitting there going, I've got the greatest investment in the world. Just nobody knows about it. As loud as you think it, nobody can hear the thoughts in your head. Okay. Mm -hmm. So get on a camera get on a keyboard, get on uh, images. And, and here's the thing, I, and maybe I'm going to give some more practical advice. I get people. So there, there's three ways you can distribute a message. There's audio, there's video, and there's written, right? Audio, vi audio vi video, and written, okay? Ideally, do all three, ideally. Um, what I then people is I will ask the question of people, I go, okay, which of those three do you do the best? Which one is like the most natural that you can just roll out of bed and you can just do it, okay? For most people, it's written. For most people, it's written, okay? And then I'll say the other one is, which one scares you the most? Which one scares the crap out of you? And for most people, it's video. And I said, okay, here's what you must do. You must do video first right? Do the difficult, do the challenging thing first, because if it's the one that scares you, it's probably scaring a whole bunch of other people at the same time, you get a little bit of a competitive advantage. So pick two of those three. So do the one you do the best, do the written, and then do the other one of do the one that scares you the most, do the video. And if you have time and capacity, do the audio, do all three if you can. From your experience, is there one particular medium that um, people engage with the most? You know, it depends. Uh, nowadays, more people are, are visual, mm -hmm. right? And, and video is taking over a lot more. Um, and, but everybody, here's the best way I would frame this would be your ideal investor or your ideal client or ideal buyer, do what they're, uh, do what they're, which is the most prevalent for them. And for example, for example, like my, my generation, a little bit of the older crowd, if you will, um, they're still very um, written oriented, reading the newspaper, reading things. So, so I will always have a blog. I will always post articles because I will put it on LinkedIn because that's more of the professional side. That's where my ideal invest people that have the capital, right? Um, on another side of my business, I have a very vested interest to attract young millennials that are looking for guidance and looking for leadership that are looking for somebody who's 20 years in the business in a sea of, of coaches and mentors that have seven years or less experience, like no, no slight against that group of people. Everybody has incredible meaning and intention and everybody intends well. It's just that I have a, a unique ability with 20 years in the business that I've seen some things and I'm attracting a younger, low, um, early 30s crowd at the same time. And that's probably because I've been doing videos and podcasts and I've been speaking in their medium as well. But most of those people, their uh, investment partners or something, they're coming from like my age group and people that have capital that maybe people that are looking to how do, what's the retirement plan? How do I transition out of my job? Stuff like that. Right. So the long winded way of saying is communicate in the platform that your ideal audience is consuming. Okay. I think, I, I think the one thing that we haven't mentioned is the trust factor that the social media also generates. When you talked earlier about somebody that tunes in and then watches 50 hours of your content, that is building their level of trust in you as somebody that uh, can then see themselves doing business with you, whether it's on, on, from a coaching aspect or whether it's from an investment aspect or just, you know, looking for information about where you invest and, and along those lines. So I think yeah. that's something that we haven't touched on. That's huge is, is that generation of trust and uh, that is almost, I guess, in this format autonomous, if you're providing a, a good level of information and you've got pure intention with what you're trying to do, I, I think that's huge. Yeah. People, people, 
you know, people will see through to intentions, right? But at the end of the day, people will remember how they felt, right? And people will can can get through intentions, right? Um, so that's actually a, a framework that I share with people is on communicating a message. I call it I call it bring the fire, F I R E, and fire is an acronym. So is whenever you have a message, how do you want them to feel? At the end. What's the intention for them? Like what's their intention, not your intention. What's their intention? The R stands for reflect upon, meaning what do you want them to think about? And then the E stands for what do you want to ex what do you want them to execute against? What do you want them to do? So what's the feeling? What's the intention? What do you want them to reflect upon? And what do you want them to do is the perfect way that I, and I, I think I invented that. I, I'm going to give myself credit for that. I didn't invent the word fire, but I invented that <laughs> acronym of how I frame. And that in and of itself, when I sit down and craft a message, I will f- go through it in detail to get those, those, those variables. And I will say, what is the feeling? What is the intention? What is the reflect on? What is the execution? Right. Yeah. One thing that I find is hard to convey or, or is through email, Russell. I mean, part of the social media um, spectrum that we haven't talked about is the email side of things. You know, everybody gets so many emails these days. How do you separate that and create connectivity through an email yeah. in your social media part of your well business. here's here's the thing i and strongly encourage everybody to is do not throw out email as a viable business as a matter of fact it's still probably one of the best obviously the best is kneecap to kneecap phone calls in person that's always the best after that email is very very high on the list okay um do not throw that out because that is one that people you know before email would probably be text because people will see text message first, but then email, people will read email still. And you can still convey, you can tell a story in the written. Essentially, maybe you synop, you tell a story from maybe from a YouTube video, and then you just share a synopsis of that via written. But the main thing you want to do is you want to have a good subject line and a good headline to get to compel people to open and compel people to keep reading. Right. Like, for example, the email I sent out last week was, you know, uh, I hate. So I think it was either I hate social media was one of them that I, I, I um, did as a test. And the other is um, love, hate, my love, hate relationship with social media. And I tested it and take a guess which one opened better. The, the I hate prior. I hate social media. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And it was, and then it was just a talk about in, in that was a, it literally was just talking about a podcast episode that I did with somebody who, who doesn't have social media. And then I told the story and then up there was a, a picture of Stevie from um, Schitt's Creek and talking about there and her, she had a little meme that she says, I hate attention. I hate attention. I hate attention. <laughs> and then I talked about the whole thing about being, you know, you'd be a shy introverted person. And then I shared some resources and tips and stuff like that. And I told the story and I made a connection through an email. Right. Eventually, there's going to come a time, and one of the emails that come out is, you know, take another Gary V, jab, 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 right hook, right? Meaning content, 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 content. And then eventually, there's going to come out where there's going to be an offer, right? But what I want people to do is I want to build the bank account out so much that that person is sitting there going, holy moly, I've got like 20 YouTube videos, I've listened to 50 podcasts, I get a weekly email. And then, oh, they're talking about a project here. Yeah, I'm going to now take a look at it because they've delivered some value to me along the way. And email still is a fantastic way to, uh, to conduct business. I think this is a good segue into, um, you know, there's been a lot of stuff in the, in the media about how bad social media is, right? How it's you know, causing depression, how it uh, causes anxiety and causing a lot of like mental health issues for a lot of people. Do, how do you, there's a two part question. First of all, how do you engage with that and how do you prevent that from happening or, you know, try to find a balance between um, using it for business means and then using it for personal means? Yeah. And secondly, uh, do you know anyone who, who doesn't use social media and still successful? Um, well, actually the podcast, I just answered the last one first. The podcast I just released this, it's a four part interview I'm, I'm trying not to pander people to go to my check my podcast out, but it does answer your question. The person who I interviewed does not have a social media account, does not. And, um, 
and he lives wherever he wants. He had, operates his business from the whole world and whatever he wants. And from the outside looking in, he's just going, wow, how do you do that? Like, how, how can you do that? Um, but he, he, he shares the story about how he tried to do all those things. He tried to do all those things and it just didn't fit with him. So he reverse engineered the plan so he wouldn't have to do it. And he's a fantastic systems person is the, where he really shines is in the operations and the systems. And that's what some of his investors and all his investors have come through family, friends, and relationships with those family and friends and referrals, word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. And that's where they've all come from. And he's, I can't remember the exact total of his portfolio, but he's done very well for himself uh, of doing that. So now the original question about, um, social media. Um, I, I'm actually, I have a lot of empathy for our, our kids with this right now. I don't know if I was strong enough, if I would have been strong enough, if I was 15, 16, 17 on social media, and I had, you know, on, on these stupid things here, I had every answer and everything in my pocket here. I don't know if I was strong, if I'd be strong enough to, 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 to be able to do it. So I give, uh, our next generation of kids, I give them an awful lot of credit for, um, how they're able to do it. Sometimes like some days I, you know, and I'm in my fifties and some days I get triggered by it. Right. Right. So, so I'm, I'm here to tell you is it happens and it needs. So, so here's some practical advice on how I help manage myself through it is I, I will take vacations from social media at certain times where I will just, it's phones done off, gone away. Okay. But the biggest reframe that's worked for me is that I use social media as a, com a communication tool to create, not to consume. And if you just think about those two words in and of itself, creating, I'm writing, I'm, you know, it's, it's a positive, it's I'm striving for something, I'm trying to make something better, I'm creating versus consuming, and I'm just, uh, I'm not thinking about it. It's just, you know, it's negative stuff like that. So if you really just and if creating and consuming doesn't work for you, use producing and consuming, right? So you're producing content, you're creating content, you're answering questions, you're providing service, like jumping onto some Facebook groups. And, and, you know, we belong to some of the Facebook groups and man, I could spend, I could spend an entire day just trying to answer people's questions because I think some people are going the wrong directions and many times, and it, it takes all the willpower to sit there and go, I don't have time to get into this right now. And, and I, I, I do a couple things. I create, I don't consume, I answer questions, but I also set hard limits where my social media time is between this and this. And when my clock goes off and my alarm on my, my timer on my phone goes off, I'm done. I can't look at it again. Right. So just set boundaries and come at it from a place of creating and helping, and it will get in a better place for you. I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a form of control because uh, you can get so lost in social media. I mean, one second you can be on there looking to do stuff with your business. And the next thing you're, <laughs> you've gone from being a creator to a consumer <laughs> within 10 yeah. minutes, you know? Yeah. And another way of framing it is, is as well as um, research is another way too, is I'm doing research that I'm looking at it. So you can, you can consume it and look at it, go, Oh, Trudeau and Trump and everybody in politics and all this kind of stuff. Or you can sit there and go, I'm doing research on what messages are resonating. What are the pain points people in the real estate community are feeling? What is, what, what caught my attention when I was scrolling through this, obviously something caught my attention. I clicked on it. What caught my attention? And then I would actually analyze it. Okay. The, the thumbnail, the graphic, what words they do. I actually then create a swipe file where I'll take a picture of it and then I'll put it into a little bit of a file folder. And if it caught my attention, um, it's something that I probably might use down the road for something I want to do. So I'm using it from an education research creation standpoint, even when I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it's borderline consumption, but I, I'm, it's research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great nugget though, really. Cause yep. then you, you, you're like, we talked about it before. It's consistent learning and you've got something you can take away and implement in your own business that will help, uh, you know, somebody catch 
something that you're putting out. You're creating yep. something that is, is uh, there's a bit of a hook there. Yeah. And, you know, bottom line, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not here to, to come across as that I know everything and I know it all about all this kind of stuff. I'm just learning like the majority of you. As a matter of fact, I make a lot of mistakes of what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure some of this stuff out, but um, I pay attention and I care about my, I care about the message I put out to try to help people. And the intention is pure from a standpoint of, I don't want it to ever come across as look at me, look at me, look at all the things I've done. My intention is to come across as what have I maybe done or who have I maybe helped that can help you on your journey to move forward? Because that's more important. We've, we've all seen, we've all seen people share a video or something. And then after you watch and go, yeah, I need a shower after that or something. Right. It's just, it's like, um, you, know, you sit there and it's all I, 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 me, 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 look at me. It's great. It's fantastic. I'm very happy for you. But most people that are watching that are watching it from a standpoint of how can that person by sharing that story, how can I put myself into that story and how can that person help me move forward? We're all watching. We're watching these stories through our own lenses on how it can help each of us. So if you learn how to tell a good story from the lenses of the people that are your audience, um, you'll have lots of business and lots of attention. And the framework, the simple framework that I give people to tell a, a good story in a short period of time is ordinary, extraordinary transformation, meaning ordinary meaning, you know, you just share a little bit of I'm just like you, I didn't know what I was doing when I first learned how to invest in real estate. And holy moly, I went to this event. And I saw all these people buying hundreds of places, and I felt so intimidated, you know, but I learned the process. And I knew that I didn't have money. And then I went out and I learned how to raise capital from others. And I bought a property a month for five years and transact over a hundred places. And I learned how to raise capital. I wrote a book. I wrote a home study program. The transformation I had to make was I had to learn how to be that person to get out of my shell to be able to do it. Right. I had to train myself to transform myself, how I showed up. So I just gave you guys a story, ordinary, extraordinary transformation. And I told it in under 50 seconds. Right. And you could take that same story framework and you could expand it over a half an hour. You could expand it over a three day event. You could expand it over different things. Right. It's actually a framework. If any of you guys are ever story, if you guys like studying story, um, go study Joseph Campbell and a hero's journey or, or another way of is the book. It's um, a, her uh, a hero of a thousand faces. And when you actually, if you ever Google that or ever look that up, you will then see that story framework that he shares is in every Star Wars trilogy. It's in the Lord of the Rings. It's in, it's in Pinocchio. It's in all of the great stories you will find will be that story framework. And I just gave you a really shortened version of it, an ordinary, extraordinary transformation. And, you know, Russell, I have to thank you again. There's so many good nuggets in this episode. Like it's going to take a little while for, I think probably have, I have to listen to this again, just to unpack all the good nuggets. Ooh, so. Getting warm in here. We, we've been having a heat wave out here on the coast out in Vancouver. So it's nice. Oh, uh, it was minus four this morning here. Uh, was, I think it was 26 here today. So I, one thing I learned about when doing podcast recordings is, you know, be careful when you talk about the weather. Cause I had a, an episode I recorded my business partner. It was minus 28 out there. And I said, so is it cold enough for you? And we released it in like March. Right. So. <laughs> any last words, Russell, any last words of advice, any last golden nuggets you can want to drop before we uh, head off? Well, I'm going to share, um, I'm going to tell the story. You guys sure. okay. If I tell a little story and, and the story is it's, it's, it's a fable, if you will. Um, it's one that just came to me just recently and it just really touched me when I heard it. Um, and here the story goes as follows. There's a, um, a young, a young boy, you know, this young, let's call him 19, 20, 20 years old. He's sitting in, sitting in the kitchen and he's, he's having trouble with life. Um, he's just, you know, girlfriend broke up with him, lost his job, you know, feeling a little bit lost on where he's going. His friends are, you know, out buying cars and stuff like that. And he's feeling he's just getting a little bit left behind. Okay. Um, wise mother says, son, go grab three pots out of the cupboard and go grab 
some carrots, some eggs, and some coffee beans out of the out of the fridge. Okay. So it gets there, puts water in each of the pots. They put it onto the onto the stove and bring each of the three pots to a boil. Okay. Then the mother throws in some chops up some carrots, throws some carrots into the one pot, throws some raw the the eggs into the other pot, and then throws the coffee beans into the pot number three. And then just says, so son, what are you seeing? He goes, I don't know, mom, what are, you, what are you trying to do? This is you're wasting my time. I told you I have all these problems. My girlfriend broke up with me. I uh, started to cry. He goes, okay, no, just stick with me here, son. So after the boiling and they let it ask, after five minutes sit down, they pull it off and says, son, pull the carrots out of there. Tell me about the carrots in the first pot. He goes, oh, they're all mushy. Ew, they're, they're mushy. He goes, okay, interesting to note. Pull out an egg out of there, pulls it out. Ugh, crack, crack, crack. It's, it's hard. It's a hard boiled egg. It's, it's, it's hard now. And then the, the, the third pot, what's the third pot? Well, it's just, it's a bunch of coffee. Okay. Well, the, what's the lesson? Each, the carrot, the egg and the coffee bean, each went into the exact same stimulus, boiling water. The carrot went in hard, came out soft. The egg went in soft and vulnerable and came out hard and bittered. The coffee went in and changed the water to turn it into a delicious cup of coffee. So son, you have a choice if you want to be a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean. And I encourage you to be a coffee bean. No matter what situation you're in, you change the environment that you're in. And if any of you guys are ever feeling a little bit stuck, remember you always have the choice to become an incredible coffee bean to change the situation that you find yourself in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Thank you. And then I'm going to give you a teaching moment before we do sign off. Um, I have a, in my book and I keep track of what I call signature stories. Like anytime I ever have a conversation, if you pulled out a question like that, I could pull out the carrot, the coffee bean, the carrot, the egg and the coffee bean, or I could pull out the next telephone pole analogy, or I could pull out the cassette tape story. I actually have a, a repertoire of stories that I can just interject and, and put into a conversation with people that just help further a message, right? Mm -hmm. So so I just encourage you guys, if you carry a book around or write things down, just just come up with a, a list and group of what you would call your signature stories, right? Because people engage with people that tell stories. And as much, and I'm going to tie this up to our entire conversation. I know we've been talking about connecting and leads and marketing on an online world. It still will come down to the human connection, right? It still will come down to being able to have that trust factor, have that connection with another human. And the people that have probably the best connection with people with relationships will be the ones that, that not only survive, but thrive in business as well. Yeah. Thanks, Russell. I think, you know, strong, trustworthy relationships are really the fundamental uh, component to any real estate investing uh, with partners along the way. So yeah. Mate, this has been phenomenal. This has been an absolutely fantastic podcast episode. And uh, we can't thank you enough for, for taking the time to join us and, and share your story and insights with us. No, happy to share, guys. Happy, honored, honored to serve. This is usually the way I, I like to say so. And if people wanted to reach out to you, Russell, how would uh, they best reach out to you? Well, if I'm doing my job on social media, they should be able to find me, shouldn't they? <laughs> uh, actually, the best way is if you just type my name into into Google, um, you will should the first one that should come up if I'm doing my job right should be my website, and that's kind of the the central uh, hub of everything that I do within my world. Um, and it's just Russell Westcott. And when you start typing in Russell, it's not Russell Westbrook. You'll get the joke if you if you actually did it. Uh, and it's Russell Westcott, W-E-S-T-C-O-T-T. -T. And, um, and that's probably the best place for people to just reach out if they ever want to, um, you know, do an audit on my website. Uh, no different than I told for you guys. Go look through it. Go look through the images. Go look through how many places I have a subscribe button or do I have a lead generation, you know, how to buy real estate without your own money, free consultation. How do I have my, my testimonials? How do I have my blog set up? How do I have stuff? Like take a look at it from a standpoint of not just that, oh, it's an interesting website. It looks good. Go deeper. Like what, it was very intentional. 
And, and unlike, you know, just like yourself, I I've gone through at least three or four revisions and, and I didn't have, I didn't have someone, someone like you <laughs> to do this. I actually, I paid somebody to, to provide me some insights and paid a designer and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not a, a, ever afraid to, to find some people that know what they do best and let them shine. Right. Well, thank you very much, Russell. Yep. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you again for coming on our show. I really appreciate oh, it. Happy to help. Russell Westcott, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Commonwealth Home Ownership Podcast. Be sure to check out all of our past episodes and our ever-growing library of content at cwho.ca. Until next time, remember to get out there, take action, and create a life of wealth by design.